Hello, Gore Artisans. My name is Shonda, and welcome to my channel, Under the Needle Quilting and Crafts. So this is going to be my QuiltCon wrap-up. I went to QuiltCon for the first time, and this is my wrap-up. So first, I'm just going to tell a quick story because I don't want to forget this. I don't know if I had told y'all, but on Friday, I went to the Sotopia booth. All right, I went to their booth, and I only bought two little things. Okay, and my total was less than twenty dollars. My card declined. Right, I'm trying to scan my credit card. It's not. I don't use this card often. Like I had to. I don't even keep it in my wallet. I keep it in a drawer in my sewing room because I don't use the card. But I wanted to use it for a quote card. So she's, you know, I tap the card. She goes, "Oh no, it didn't go through. You want to try again?" I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. So I tap it again, and she goes, "You know, well." Let me be more specific. She was like, oh, that didn't go through. Do you want to try again? And I, it's, it's just that tone. It's that tone. That to I don't like that tone. Um, and I was like, yeah, sure. So I do it again. She goes, um, it still declined. And I get it because it's, it's an awkward situation. And I've worked retail before. I've worked, I've worked retail. <laughs> it's been a long time, but I've worked retail before. And I've also been in retail establishments where I really did not have the money where my card actually was declined because something happened like like um i forgot about a charge like back in the day before we had internet and apps on our phone and you had to write down everything you spent to keep track of it um <laughs> so yeah there were there were times when this has happened to me this is not my first rodeo but it's um it's exceptionally irritating when you do have the money especially when it's such a low dollar amount it's like it was like $19 and change or something like that. $20. But it was just the way the way her voice was. Like, I just didn't like it, right? I'm not going to use the T word. I, that T-R-I-G-G-E-R. -G -G -E I don't even want to say it. Because I feel like people use that word too much. It's this overused word. And most of the time, we're not triggered. We just don't like something. The difference between being triggered because you had some kind of trauma or just you didn't like something that somebody said or the way they said it. That's not a trigger. Okay? <laughs> In my opinion. So I just didn't like the way she said it. So I was like, well, it's fine. You know, and I saw so I got my debit card out, paid for my stuff, went over, called Capital One. Apparently Capital One had sent me a new debit card. I mean, a new credit card in July. No, sorry, August. In August of last year, they sent me a new credit card. I guess, so I don't, I don't know why. But because it, it explains a lot. Because when I'm trying, I was trying to go online and, um, not go online, but, um, go on the app in my phone and, and talk to someone or I was trying to call and they're like put in the last four digits of your card number and I'm putting in the last four digits and they were like we can't find that account and I'm like well why not I'm looking at the account on my phone I have a I have an account I was, it was I had the wrong card so I don't know where that card is I apparently they sent me a card in August I don't know where it is I don't know if I threw away the wrong one like when I was disposing of one I don't know if I threw it away I don't know but that's what happened that's why my card wasn't going through. So, next day, so this would be yesterday, I go back to the same booth and I go to buy something. <clears throat> and I get in there, I get up to the register, and I'm using my phone as a tap, right? Because I'm trying to not uh, carry a lot of stuff in my hands um, or have to, you know, I'm trying not to have, to, I'm trying to streamline. Is that, I, think, I think I got food on my mouth. Sorry. I was trying to streamline my experience. And so I thought it would just be easier to just use the tap on my phone. Well, you know sometimes you use the tap on your phone. Like there are issues. Sometimes you have to put your thumbprint. Like my phone will have to put my thumbprint to authorize or whatever. And so I go to, I tap. And she, and she looks at me in my face and she goes, and I know she remembered me. I know she remembered me because her face changed when I walked up to the register. Like, I could see her face change, like, because I'm pretty recognizable, right? Because there's a minority of African-American women there, right? There are less of us. And then not many of us have this hair, and then not many of us had a card decline the day before. I know she remembered me. So when I walked up to her, it's like her face just kind of changed already. And I was like, here we go. Here we go. And so then I tap my card all confidently, 
you know, because I know, I know I'm set up for success. I know I've got everything in there. I've loaded the credit card into the phone. I've done everything. I, it's, I'm, we're good. And she looks at me and she goes, mm, didn't go through. I wanted to like, I'm not violent, but part of me imagined just leaping over the counter and taking her out. Just, anywho. So I, I was like, well, I know I'm good, so I'm going to tap again. And she goes, okay, there you go. And then she smiled and she gave me my stuff. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I didn't like that. I don't, I, just, I didn't like that. And, I, and I'm not blaming her because it's just an awkward situation, right? You, it's just awkward. When someone swipes their card and it doesn't go through, that's awkward. We've all been there. I mean, on one side of that, or we've seen it happen to someone else. It's embarrassing. But... I just didn't like the way she handled it. I don't know. Anywho, the good, bad, and the ugly about Qualcomm. So, this is my first Qualcomm. I taught myself to quilt back in the mid to late 90s when there was no Qualcomm. It didn't exist. And then I basically did not engage into in, in the quilt world for a long, long time until 2018 when I picked it back up after my separation from my husband. And so I picked it back up, and but I still wasn't quite doing the online portion. I really only went online because I was looking for patterns. Like I didn't even know, I didn't even know that you could go online and buy fabric at that point. <laughs> like I like I take that back. I mean, of course I knew, but I just I had never gone to an online quilt store. I had never gone to a Missouri Star website, a Fat Quarter Shop website. None of that. This was all brand spanking new to me. Like, because I quilted before social media existed is when I started. So when I picked it back up, I didn't run to social media um, to start. Like, I, I didn't run to social media. I just went with what I had. I literally went into my stash and got my fabrics and my patterns, and I worked on what I had. I didn't touch the Internet. So when I finally started getting into the online aspect of quilting, that's when I heard about QuiltCon. So maybe like 2019. I'm really new here. Um, last year was in Atlanta. I was going to go. But I changed my mind when I found out this year was going to be in Raleigh. So I was super excited about it. Like just really excited. This is something I've been hearing about now for years. I had never been able to attend. I feel like the year before it was in Atlanta. It was someplace else like on the more toward the west. It was it was some it had been some place I would have had to fly to and get um, and that kind of stuff. Whereas Atlanta is like a six hour drive and I can save money by not having to fly. So I was really excited, really really excited to go. Um, my ticket was two hundred and sixty four dollars. I bought my ticket early. Um, I don't I think it costs more if you wait later, but that included four days plus the all access lecture pass. So, which I did not need. And I'll talk about that. Um, and then I paid for one class. That class was $96. With tax and everything, it came up to $98.40. The class that I took was um, um, Pixel to Patchwork in EQ8. So you're taking pixels, you're taking a picture, and you're changing that picture into patchwork. Right? And that picture can be, you know, you know uh, this here. We did a flower for our test project in the class. So that's what I paid. And I felt, you know, for four days, that's reasonable, right? It's going to be way less than going to Disney World, right? <laughs> for four days. So I was excited. I was excited. Time came. I get there. I don't really know what to expect. And so I'm just going to give you what I felt like were the overall pros and cons. And they're mostly pros. And then I'll give you some tips about things that I personally experienced and what I would do differently. And then I would also reveal everything that I've purchased. This is going to be a massive haul. The, the, this, the haul portion, is probably going to take 30 minutes. It's going to be a long video. Go ahead and speed it up. Um, watch me on 1.75. Okay. So what I really liked... Well, first of all, Raleigh, where they held it, of course, and I would expect anywhere they hold it to be 
clean and safe. So it was clean, it was safe. There was plenty of parking, plenty of parking, and the parking was close. So there was none of this, you know, I got to walk half a mile after I park. No, it's like a two minute walk across the street. Like the, it's the parking, there's ample parking. So I appreciated that. The event itself I felt was well organized. Um, like you, it was very clear when you came through the door where you needed to go, what you needed to do. They had event staff there who could direct you and answer questions. Um, I, I felt it was really well done. There were concessions. Uh, when you walk in, and in the main area of the convention center, there were concessions there. You go upstairs to the next level, there were concessions there. And when you go went downstairs to the vendor floor, there were concessions there. There were plenty of concessions. Um, and I felt like there was a variety of food. Um, I did not eat much. All I had was a pretzel and um, a side salad and with chicken. Um, but and they they did have alcoholic beverages there. Um, I had a glass of wine. There were some ladies that had a beer. We sat down and and, and chopped it up and talked. Um, I I felt like it was well organized. Um, it was very clear where the classes were and where the lectures were. So I thought that that was well done. Um, there was plenty of bathrooms, um, bathrooms everywhere. So no issues there. You don't have to walk five miles to get to a bathroom. There were bathrooms everywhere. So um, I appreciated that. There were maps. So, when, you know, when you got there, they had maps. <clears throat> um, and they gave you a lanyard for your for your pass. I felt like that was a nice touch. I don't feel like that's necessary. Like, I don't feel like that's required. But, you know, to give you a lanyard. Yes, to give you the pass. But, like, you know, when you take a cruise... Cruise costs way more than QuiltCon. You're going to get your ID pass, but you're going to bring your own lanyard. And they're not giving you a lanyard. Even though you done paid $5,000 for a cruise, you still got to buy your own lanyard. I felt like the lanyard was a nice touch. And it's a little piece that you have of QuiltCon, even if you don't buy anything. Um, and I felt like the food prices were reasonable as well. I felt the concession prices were reasonable, given where we are. I mean, if you've ever been to any type of football game or a basketball game, you know how much that stuff can cost. And I felt like this was definitely less than what I paid the last time I went to a concert or the last time I went to a play. So I thought the prices were reasonable. Um, for me, the cons were lack of seating. You're there all day. You're shopping. You're walking around. At some point, you're going to want to sit down. And there wasn't really reasonably a place to do that. Um, even if you bought food, there really wasn't a place to sit down and eat it. So the way the convention center was set up was that on one side was all the vendor booths. In the middle were kind of the concessions and the exhibit stage and the, and the seating area if you wanted to watch the exhibits. And when I say exhibits, that's like when... Janome comes up and presents, look at my machine, or they dem they do a project using their machine to demo it, or someone like the my quilts lady came and she talked about her app and showed us how to use it and demoed it. Um, you know, that's what I mean when I say exhibit stage, presentation, if you will, presentation stage, and there was a seating area for the audience. Most of the time, when you wanted to eat. You had to go sit over there, which then there are people who might want to see the exhibit that couldn't sit down to see the exhibit because there were people that were just posted up in that area to eat or just rest. There wasn't a place to just sit down and rest. So I felt like that would be nice if they had had that. Um, I think that first day or two, like there was literally only two tables to sit down and eat. Um, they eventually brought in more. I know yesterday was there, ha there were more tables yesterday, so I think there were like four or five, but it just was not enough for the, the thousands of people who were there. Um, it was just uncomfortable to have to, like, when I ate my chicken, I sat in the exhibit area, and I had to, like, I mean, we've all done it, like, at a, at a park bench or something, and you're trying to eat on, on the side of you. 
um, on another chair or like at a cookout. You know, I felt like I was at a cookout. You know, somebody's backyard cookout and I'm using another chair as my table to eat. That's what that's what it was like. So I didn't like that. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a huge deal, but I didn't really like that part. The lack of seating in tables. I didn't like that. That was really my only con. I know this is going to be a rough edit because I'm bad at editing, but there's something I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention that um, one of the things that I, I mentioned on day two that made me feel better was when I went to, they call it an affinity space. Um, that was for African, Amer African American quilters. And even though I didn't hang out with those people, you know, on, sub on the subsequent day, I, ne I didn't feel alone. Like I, I wasn't alone anymore. There were familiar faces now, right? There are faces that I knew. And when I went back and looked at the schedule, I saw that they had this for lots of groups. So they had, you know, um, time set aside for people in the deaf community, people in the LGBTQIA plus community, um, the African American community, the Latin community. Um, so this was something that they had for lots of communities. And I think that that's a good idea. But I also think it's a good idea just to have a place for people to go who who are lonely or who are alone and who feel com uncomfortable, right? Because the reason why it's easy to open up in a space like that is because everyone is there for the same reason. Like you went out of your way to go to a separate room that is designed for people in a certain group to get to know each other. Like that's what they're literally there for. So you know in that space that you can talk to anyone because if you wanted to be left alone, you wouldn't have come to that space. And I just found that very helpful and very freeing. Um, and just, it, 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 it gave me motivation and it made me feel, it calmed my anxiety down as far as, you know, feeling out of place or feeling like I didn't know anyone or feeling like I couldn't talk to anyone because you're put in a room and you're you're going there voluntarily nobody's making you go you know you're choosing to go there because you want to meet people and so while I think it's good that they have these spaces for uh, marginalized communities or communities that um aren't um, that they're just they make up a smaller percentage of the quilting community at whole um, I think that it would have been really really nice to have <coughs> a little meet and greet now they did one um, night two I couldn't go I think Janome held one um, that was but that that's different right because that was the part that was like an event it was like in the main conference hall um, like when you first walk in, it w because dude, we could hear it. I had a class during that time. And so we could hear <clears throat> the little, I call it, let's call it a mixer. That I think that's a good, that's a good word for it was like a little mixer. Um, Shinomi had a little mixer and, um, but even that, you know, I, I don't know. It was something about separating myself, going into a room with other people who are, you know, just wanting to get to know each other. And I, I liked that. So I think that that, would, that could be good. I think, you know, they should have something every day at 9 a.m. for just newbies, you know, or for people who are alone or, or maybe just want to meet people. Maybe that's too early. I don't know what a good time would be. Um, and I don't know that it has to be every day or anything like that. But I think that that would be nice. I think that would be a nice thing. Um, to have. Um, I know the night we did it, we had, again, I had I had to leave early because we had the class. I, my class was at six. And so the, they were going to be in that room until eight. But it's then it's like then still you have to choose between am I going to go to the space for the African with African American cultures are getting together, then I'm going to miss the Janome mixer. Like, and I, I don't know, I didn't really like the timing of that. I don't think um, but I think that's just when it, the, the times were, because that's when other, you know, there were other groups that met at that same time. So I don't think that, I don't think anything about it. Um, I just feel like 
if I didn't have the class, I still would have wanted to do both those things. I wanted to I wanted to do the mixer and do this. So I think it would be nice if it wasn't if it didn't come conflict against a meet and greet. Like like a like, you know, the whole point is to like meet and greet and I have two options to meet and greet, but I can only go to one. So it didn't matter to me because I had the class anyway and I was gonna miss it all anyway. So anyway, that being said, I think that would be nice to have like a little daily, you know, I don't pick your time, insert your time here, um, where people have the option if they, you know, want a buddy to walk around with or if they just want to get to know people or if they just need a break to get out of that space without having to go all the way to their car. If they just need a break from people, you can call it a breakout room. I don't know what you call it. I don't know what you want to call it. I mean, I wouldn't allow food in there because then people are just going to go in there and eat. And that's not the point of it, right? Um, but I think something like that would be nice. So, anywho. Um, but there are things that I don't put on QuiltCon. They're just things that I didn't think about. And one of them is the cost of parking. So just be ready to spend 20 bucks a day to park because that's what it costs. 20 to $22 a day depending on how many hours you're going to be there. Um, it cost me $22 um, the day that I got there at like 3, and I didn't leave until not, like $22, $22 a day to park. My first day was a little cheaper because I did on the street parking, which was only two hours, and then I just extended it for like another hour or two. So... I didn't have to pay that much parking day one, but days two and three, where I knew I was going to be there for a longer period of time, um, I parked in one of the lots and I paid to park and it was $22 a day. I, I did not consider that chart, that cost. So if you are on a budget, just make sure that you're putting aside $100 for parking. Um, you... You want to figure out how you want to carry your stuff, right? Um, the first day I went, I had a crossbody bag that I use when I travel. It's one of those ones that, you know, it's thicker. It's got the RFID in it. Um, and so I was using that the first day. Um, and I had a beverage with me. I had a water bottle, the one that I left there. So upset about that. I'm going to have to order another water bottle. But it was maybe about this size. Like, yeah, it's pretty, it's probably pretty much about this size, maybe a little bit shorter, okay? But it was about this size. And so I had that. And um, in my crossbody, you know, I just had like my car keys, some tissue, um, a lip balm, my credit cards, my ID, that kind of stuff. Um, and I quickly got tired of holding all of that. Because... I'm holding the water bottle and my phone. And I had a backpack on my back for any purchases that I made. Um, and so even just having my phone and a water bottle was too, it was just too much to carry. at it because of my hands. So every time I wanted to do something, I had to put I had to put my stuff down and it just wasn't really working for me. Um, so day three, what I ended up doing was I brought this book bag. This was perfect for me because I've got the pocket holders over here, right? So I could throw this on my back. So I completely abandoned the crossbody. Um, I popped this on my back. I put my water bottle or I was my coffee cup in there. I could put my purchases in here. I've got this zip pouch in the front here where I was able to put my, my things. And I put everything in a plastic bag just to make my life easier. So here I have a couple of chocolates, I have a lighter, I have my little medication thing in case I needed my medication, I've got some face cream, I've got the thing to clean my eyeglasses, you know, lip balm, lipstick, and a hair tie. I put that in here. Um, I also had put, I had a little bag of almonds, I put that in here too. So then whenever I wanted a little snack, I could just reach in here, I could take this off my back, reach in here, grab my almonds. Um, <coughs> Because I just found that I wasn't reaching into the crossbody very often for much. 
I wasn't going in there very often. So it's like I'm carrying this for nothing. So eventually I ended up putting the coffee cup in the crossbody. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. So that's why day three I chose the book bag and I chose to use my phone for payment because this way I could just, you know, I could have, I could be hands free. I could take my phone and put it here. My hands are free. I can reach and grab my, my coffee when I need it and I could put my purchases in the bag. That's what I found worked for me. Um, because I was, I, I had, it's like I was carrying too much stuff the first, the first two days that I was there and it wasn't working for me. So figure out how you want to carry your things. Um, also have a budget, have a budget, consider, you know, I mean, if you're good at this things, if you're good at saying no to yourself, then by all means do what you, you're fine. But if you have difficulty saying no to yourself when you see pretty things, then my recommendation would be to leave all your credit cards at home, delete them from your phone and just bring some cash and your ID. Delete, delete all the cards out of your digital wallet and leave them all at home. Um, another thing I did not consider, in all of my excitement, I never once considered the crowds and how crowded it was going to be and how that was going to impact me. I did not realize that I react to crowds differently than I used to. In 2020, I went to work every day, five days a week. I interact with people every day. I went out to lunch, you know, I went out. And since then, I don't really do that anymore. And I am home more. And I did not realize that not being around people has it caused my anxiety to be greater when I am around them. I've never really been a fan of like massive crowds. Like that's why I stopped going to the state fair, the, the, the North Carolina State Fairs in Raleigh every year. And I stopped going years ago because there's just so many dang people that you just feel like squeezed in. And I didn't realize that I was going to react in that way. I did not realize that it was going to impact me in that way. And nor did I even consider the crowds at all. Like in, every, in all of my excitement, no part of me said to myself, it's going to be busy. There's going to be a lot of people there. Like that part just escaped me. It just did. I just didn't think about it. I did not think about it at all. Um, and I wish I had. Day three, I think I mentioned this yesterday. I, when I started to feel it, you know, I just opened my Spotify. I've got my earbud in. I played some music. And that was what worked to get me through. Um, so those are really my, my, my pros and cons as far as the, the venue itself and how it's organized. Now, I definitely wasted my money getting that all access lecture pass because I went to two lectures the entire time I was there. So I paid $14.40 for each lecture and I only went to two. So of that $264, I probably wasted 200 of it for lectures I did not go to. And I didn't realize that because I didn't even realize what I was buying. Like when I bought my pass to QuiltCon, I didn't even realize what I was buying. Like I didn't, I didn't realize how this was going to be. So what I would say is what I would do, um, I, I know I won't be going to QuiltCon next year because it's in Phoenix. Um, but if I were to go again, I would not, I probably would not buy the all access lecture pass. Instead, I would curate an itinerary for myself. Now, I am an organized analytical person when it comes to time. It, well, let me, I'm, how can I explain? I'm late for everything. So I'm not organized when it comes to time. But when I'm going places, I like to know where I'm going and when. Now, whether I make it there or not, Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Will I make it on time? I don't know. But I need a plan. I need an itinerary. I need a framework to work with. And so I think if I had known better, I would have really taken the time to plan my day and organize it better, to really look at all the lectures and say, these are the ones that I want to go to. 
to look at the exhibits and say, these are the ones I want to go to, and then do that. Um, now, I did kind of realize that in the app, on day two in the app, that you could star the, the things that you want, like um, the exhibits that you want to see and the lectures that you want to attend. You can star them, and they will add them to your calendar, or you will get pop-ups from the QuiltCon app telling you that something's, that one of your events is coming up. I think I have one in here. No, I think I probably dismissed it. Yeah, I did. I probably dismissed it. But um, that's really helpful. That's really helpful. Like plan plan your day. Plan your day. Um, and say, um, I'm going to spend this time shopping, you know, visiting the booths. And I'm going to spend this time, you know, my lecture's at 1. Um, so I'm just going to look, you know, I'm getting there at, at 11. My first lecture is at 1, so I don't want to get bogged down shopping just yet. So why don't I spend some time looking at the quilts? And then I'll go to my lecture at 1. And then after my lecture at 1, then I'll go to the concessions and I'll grab me a bite to eat. And then I'll do the shopping. Like, have a framework. I wish I had done that. I would have gotten more out of it. Now, this is my first one, so I don't have a point of reference. Now, um, what... Um, one person did say that to her, it was less, it was more commercial and less quilty. Like it used to be more focused on instruction and now it seems more focused on concessions. And with that being said, I feel 99.99999% sure that QuiltCon will be back in Raleigh in the next three years. Because when I tell you Raleigh showed out, Raleigh showed out. Raleigh bought everything those people had. There were people who showed up today for the first day that were upset because, not today, um, they showed up Sunday, Saturday. They showed up Saturday for their first day and were upset because stuff was gone. Stuff was gone. People were sold out. I was at Latifah Safir's uh, bo uh, booth and she was like, I heard her talking to her staff and she was like I guess tomorrow we just gonna have to tell them we can just ship it to them for free because we're sold out of everything we, we ain't got nothing left the violet craft booth was empty the only thing left was the display w w like the display items on the wall everything was gone gone I don't even know what these people are buying today like <laughs> so, one lady said um she said, <laughs> how did she put it? She said, um, one of the guys said, um, I guess the woodworking um, booth. And he said, I guess I can just show them what I could sell them. Because there was nothing left. Nothing left. And so given that, you know, focus on commercialism and given how well those booths sold, this, they're going to be back here. They're going to be back. They, they, there's just, there's no way. Um, people were talking about the differences between Atlanta and here. And they were like, they, I think um, it was M.A. Couture. And she said that by the second day, they sold more in Raleigh than they did in all four days in Atlanta. So QuiltCon will be back here. I, I guarantee it. Um, some of the booths that I really liked, there were some really whimsical booths um, that were just so, so, so nice. I'm going to try to, um, well, first let me show you one quilt. I looked at a lot of quilts. I took pictures of a lot of quilts. But I'm not, I don't know how to do a slideshow to show y'all. And, Yeah. And I'm not going to sit here and scroll and show y'all on my phone because I feel like that would not really be entertaining to watch. But I want to show y'all this one quilt that blew my mind. It was in the tiny quilt section. This is the quilt. Okay. Let me see if it'll focus. It won't focus. I thought it was embroidery. I thought it was embroidery, but it's not embroidery. It's little teeny 
tiny one inch pineapple blocks. Can you see, can you believe that? I was floored, floored. And if y'all haven't checked out Genesis from um, Jenny from the quote block, so that's G-E-N-N-Y from the quote block, check her out. Um, I was, I went on her Insta today and followed her. That's the little 14 year old girl who was working with Spoonflower um, and who's been, you know, quilting and had two quilts in the show. Support the youth. Um, um, so that was great. Some of the booths, though, um, play, some of the places I never heard of. I had never heard of Duckadilly. They sell a lot of Liberty fabrics. Um, I think I've got a picture of their... I'm not even going to try. Um, but I thought that was a really cute one. Um, just the way... I didn't buy anything in there. It was all way too expensive. Y'all know Liberty ain't cheap. Um, and... So no, I didn't. I didn't buy anything in there, but it was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous booth. I loved that booth. Um, Sotopia, I loved. Even though I had the issue with the girl at the register, I loved that booth. I loved. I. It was so. To me, it was like the most unique of all the booths. Um, in the sense that. I don't know. I, I just really liked it. I just liked the way it was set up. I liked everything they had there. Like, if I could have bought all of it, I would have bought all of it. Um, Crimson Tate, I liked their booth a lot. Just gorgeous quilts. Um, Craft South was amazing. That's an Anna, Mar Anna Maria Horner. So, of course, her work is friggin' stunning. Um, Modern American Vintage was nice. I liked Elkhorn Quilt Company. Elk. Horn, E L K H O R N. Um, there were a lot of booths that I really, really liked. I got to use a long arm for the first time. I've never gotten to try a long arm, so that was nice to be able to do that. I enjoyed that. I liked that. Um, I liked that a lot. Um, let's see what else. Um, what else did I really like? I can't. I can't think of anything else. I'm gonna start showing y'all. I'm gonna start showing y'all all this. That I purchased at QuiltCon. Now, if y'all y'all might see me not making a lot of videos, or they might be coming from my car, because I'm gonna have to get a second job to pay for everything that I bought at QuiltCon. So let's show y'all day one. Now, y'all know day one, I had told y'all I had got the pin and the socks that cost me thirty three dollars. I'm starting to wonder if somebody made a mistake because I went back. I went back because um, I was like, how? So. I, I, on day two, when I went back, I wanted to know what the price was. The socks were $18. The pin was 5 That's $23. So how, how did we get 33 I'm confused. But I didn't get a receipt. So what could I, I didn't, what could I say? So, anywho, day one. That's part of what I got on day one. Also on day one. Um, I saw they this booth. I forgot the name of the booth, but they had one yard for $8. And I was like, oh, that's probably the most affordable thing that's going to be here. So let me get some. And let me go out of my colors. Let me go out of my wheelhouse. Let me pick fabrics that I wouldn't normally pick. And so I chose these five. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. I'll probably put them in a giveaway. Um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I do really like these. These three are my favorites. I don't know. But I have no idea what I want to do. Um, now, I will say on day two, every, every one of these was gone. They had a whole bin of them by the register. And by day two, and it was like heaping. You know, you could you could walk past and you could see them. By day two, there was there was nothing left in that bin. It was like a wooden bin, and nothing nothing was left in there. By day two, it was all all of it was gone. When I say Raleigh showed out, Raleigh showed out. I also on day one, um, I'm not going to talk about the prices of everything that I buy because that would be humiliating. On day one, I also bought this kit. You're going to see a lot of kits. Now, I already own this pattern. 
right? And I could have had them take the pattern off, but then, like, this is, this is sealed very well. So to get the pattern out of here just would have ruined the whole aesthetic, and I didn't want to ruin the aesthetic, so I let it be. But this is all the fabric and the, the, the floss that you need to make this quilt. I am in love with this quilt. And I bought the pattern knowing that I would probably never make it just because of the fabric requirements alone. The fabric requirements alone were like, I'm probably never going to make this because of that. So when I saw her there and I saw the kit, I was like, sold. Sold. I love this project. This is going to be a passion project for me. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to make this, but... I don't think I'm going to wait too long. Um, it's definitely not going to be, it's not going to be 2024, I don't think, because I've already, I'm already doing the two upscale plaid quilts, and then I've got the GE uh, Stripology Virtual Retreat next month, like literally a month from now, and that's going to be two more quilts, and I still have quilts from last year that I want to work on. So, this is probably going to be a 2025 project for me, or maybe late 2020, late 2024. But um, and this is probably going to be a long-term project. So this is going to be something that I work on over time because there's all this there's handwork involved. You can see all of the all these little patches. Let me see. I took a picture of the actual quote, and I think that might show a little better. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I went to her booth like twice because I wanted. To, I like the quilt. Let me let me find that picture. All right. So this is the quilt. Let me. I'm just gonna blow it up so you can see the blocks. So this is like that's hand stitched on there. You see what I mean? Like. So there's handwork involved. That's where the floss comes in. So I am really happy to have this. Really happy to have this kit. Um, the designer is olivegraystudios.com. So I got a couple of pins. Um, so yeah, just love this quilt. Never thought I'd make it just because I would never be able to source all of the fabric for it. Because it's like... 14 yards of fabric or something ridiculous like that. Okay, that was day one. Now day two, I didn't buy much. It was just that one altercation I had in Sotopia with the little blonde girl behind the register who thought I was broke because I couldn't pay $20. I, my cart declined on $20. But what I bought was this. It says weekly intentions. And there's a goal up here at the top. And see, it starts on Monday and it goes to Sunday. Now, what y'all don't know is that I had been doing like an accountability project for myself. And I had made, of course I can't find anything. I had made myself these sheets. And on each sheet, um, I have three days on there. And so for the three days, I basically just, um, for each day, I write down three things that I want to do or accomplish that day. And it's usually something that I've been procrastinating. Um, and I, when I saw this, I was like, well, this is perfect. This is literally what I've been doing by hand. I just made some sheets on my computer and printed them out. I also bought one of these. They had these. I love this thing. We got one in the Fat Quarter Shop box last year. And I've been loving it ever since. Um, I think this one's going to go in the kitchen. So that I have one for the kitchen um, because it does help. It's really helpful when you're opening boxes or packages. So this one's going to go in the kitchen. Um, I'm probably going to hide it because I don't want my family to know about it because then they're going to use it and then they're not going to put it back where it goes and then I'm not going to be able to find it and I'm going to be upset. That was day two. Now my big shop day was yesterday, day three. So let's get into it. The first thing I bought, oh, 
And I had to carry this around all day because it was the first thing I bought. I bought the Stribology XL ruler. Now, I have a ruler like this. You can see the one back there, but it's not as well made and my cuts be off. So when I use my Stribology squared versus when I use my knockoff Stribology, it's different. And so I bought this. Um, I probably never would have bought this if I had not gone to QuiltCon because, well, yeah, I just probably wouldn't have. I wanted this, um, I wanted this Stravology XL ruler. When I bought the knockoff, I bought the knockoff because at the time they had made the Stravology XL ruler. It wasn't called that. It was just called the Stravology ruler. And the knockoff that I bought was a little bit bigger. And if I had known that Stripology was going to reimagine that ruler and make it bigger, I would have waited and bought that. But here we are. So I bought that. And that came with... Oh, there's one more thing I bought yesterday. I almost forgot. I bought that. I bought. No, I'm sorry. Not yet. Yeah, yesterday. Um, day one. I bought this on day one as well. It's one of the things I bought on day one. And I probably would have bought more from that booth, um, but the guy wasn't paying attention to me. And I'm just that way. If I go into a booth and nobody like acknowledges me or says hello to me in any shape, way, shape, or form, then I'm probably not gonna buy anything. He probably could have sold me a crochet kit if he had talked to me because he had these handmade crochet kits um, and I think it was like $40 and it was like an interchangeable. So it was like one of those, y'all know what I'm talking about. I've got, anyway, y'all know what it is. It was one of those handmade tools. It looked almost like how the handmade seam rippers look um, where you have like a seam ripper on one side and a stiletto on the other. Um, and he had those too. I definitely would have bought one of those if he had talked to me, um, but he didn't, and so I didn't, but that's how it looked, and you could swap out the hook part, so you could take the hook part out and swap it out with a different size, and there was a kit that came with I, J, and K, and I probably would have used it. I probably would have bought it um, if he had just looked at me, because I couldn't accurately try the product out, because he had a worsted weight yarn out, but all of the hooks he had for display were a C. That hook don't go with that yarn. So I couldn't get a good flow to test it out because it was the wrong size yarn for the hook. I mean, it, it was the wrong size hook for the yarn. It was too friggin' small. And so I couldn't try it out. And even though I was standing there trying it out, even though I came to his booth couple, several times, and even though I looked at several things, and even though I bought the shirt, he never acknowledged me. And I, it wasn't just me. Like, there were other people that, same thing. I mean, just, you just, you had to ask him. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that for something that I didn't really need. I needed the shirt, though. So I, I, bought, I bought the shirt because I needed the shirt. Okay. So with the Stripology XL ruler, we also got, oh, let's see. We got some patterns. One, you got to choose three patterns and some ruler stickers. Three. So I probably have a lifetime supply of these ruler stickers because they are reusable and repositionable. And I've gotten them every time I've gotten them in various quilt boxes. Like I think there was some in So Sampler once. I think there was some in Open Gate once. Um, I think there was another subscription box I was in where I got a sheet of these and then, you know, Gudrun will send them to you every time we have a stripology retreat and I've done two, she'll send you a sheet of stickers. Like I'm never going to have to buy these and the ones I have are going to last forever because I, I just keep getting more and, and these are the patterns I got. I got the strip plus pattern, the Nelly pattern and the Taylor and that's because I already own most of the patterns. Uh. 
Also from her, from the GE website, I got this little kit here. This is basically 12 different pieces that are six by 21 and another and then a quarter yard of fabric for binding and this with this you can make one any of her little patterns so she has like a full size pattern and then sometimes she'll make a little version of that same pattern and these bundles are to make that I just thought the fabric was pretty um, I went to Latifah Sapphire's booth because I I mean by going to QuiltCon everything you buy you're supporting a small business you're supporting small businesses um, but I always like to if I can support a small black business if I can so I was there and I saw this t-shirt quilty sexy cool I love it and I also got her half square rectangle half rectangle triangle ruler Okay. Um, I went to the Elkhorn. Um, I think I said was it Elkhorn Quilt Company? That was one of the ones I liked, and I went there, and they had this like stunning quilt. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna, I know I took a picture of it, but it's hard to see because there were so many people in the way. So, and I'm familiar with the pattern because I'm from, I follow the pattern creator that her name is Emily Denise or Emily Dennis, sorry, but this is the quilt. Yeah, it's just all the glare. It's just not working, but that's the quilt and it's called, um, what is it? Lucky Log Cabin. This fabric is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Um, but I've seen her... Because I get her newsletters and I've seen her uh, quilts on Instagram. I've seen her do this quilt on Instagram. Um, but Elkhorn Quilt Company took her pattern and kitted it up. Um, and I'm excited about that. Oh, we're, we're not done. Hold on. Oh. Also from Sotopia. Well, not I haven't gotten to Sotopia yet. Hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so much stuff. Um, okay. Um, I went to Serendipity Woods. I like them as well, um, and I could not pass it. This bundle. It's so cute. It's adorable. I couldn't pass it up. It says pleasant palettes for pretty patchwork, bit by bit stash builder, that sixteenths. And this is the fairy garden palette. And these pieces are nine by ten and a half. It just it was just so yummy. Also from there I got some buttons. Because that quote that I showed you, this one here, it needs buttons. And I found these cute tilde buttons at that same at that same place. I found some cute tilde buttons that I thought would go great. This is definitely the least expensive and most affordable thing that I bought. These buttons were only $3.50 a pack. Um, and then you got a free little, you got two, you got to pick a free little pack of those same little, same little fabric rolls. Um, I went to, I forgot the name of the store. But I saw this gorgeous fat quarter bundle, and I was like, and I picked it up, and I was like, oh, I love this. I love this so much. I love this so much. And then I was, I looked over, and I saw the same bundle, but a fat eighth bundle. And so I went with the fat eighth bundle, because I've already bought enough. Um, but this is Nana by Juicy Juice. 
23 fat eighths. <sighs> and while I was there, they, in that shop, they gave me um, a little free spirit um, tape measure. Not that I need another one of these, but oh, I think it was Sewing Party. I think that was the name of it. I think the name of it was Sewing Party, where I got that um, that Juicy Juice bundle. Okay. I also made a stop at Crimson Tape. I should have got it the day before. The day before, they had a quilt kit that had um, 15 three eighth yard cuts and it was like I should have bought that but I was like no I don't want to do a lot of shopping today my main shopping day is going to be Saturday well I wish I had because now the only the only way I could get the fabric was to get a one yard bundle so this is a one yard bundle of Ravel Ravel is the new um, the newest line by eBond who I adore. I did get to see a lecture from her last night. That's why I stayed so late. Um, her lecture didn't start until 6.30 and ended at 7.30. And if I wasn't such a fan of her work, I would have been ready to leave at 5 o'clock. But I stayed because I wanted to hear what she had to say about her artistic process. And I'm glad that I was there for that. But this is that, that, that lovely, lovely collection. So excited about it. She is one of my favorite new designers. She's quickly becoming one of my favorites. Okay, almost done. I was at Sotopia. I wish I had taken a picture of the bag. I don't know where this came from. Oh, I got a pencil from Crimson Tate. Um, and also because that bundle cost what it cost, I got a free shine bright bag with the pencil and there was something else from Crimson Tate some stickers or something somewhere um, but at Sotopia they had all of these bags like every bag was just so stinking cute um, one of the ones I wanted sold out like and there was a lot of them there was a lot of kits she probably had about 15 kits made. And not only were all the kits gone, but every single pattern was gone too. Because the kits are sold separate from the pattern. And every pattern was gone for that for that project. Sold out. Um, but this is the kit. It's called the Making Backpack. And this is what it, what it looks like. This is also what it looks like. And with this kit, you get everything, including the hardware. So all you need is your soft and stable and maybe some interfacing. Because you have the webbing for the handles um, and the straps. You have the zippers. You have all the fabric and the hardware. So yeah, all I would need is some soft and stable and some fusible interfacing two different kinds of interfacing I guess but yeah I thought this was adorable um, also from there they had these adorable labels absolutely adorable labels they had this one here I'm not gonna say it out loud because I don't want to use the F word on my channel too cute and then this one here that says you can't buy this so also from there I got this little letter the letter C which I'm probably going to put on my backpack okay um I think I think that's it oh um I also got a pin from Crimson Tate Shine Bright so I got the the pencil, the, the pin, and 
the bag. I love that they're doing the two prongs for pins now because for years they just did one and the pin would be too heavy and it would fall forward and stuff like that. So I'm glad they're doing two now. Maybe they've been doing it for years, but I don't know. The very last thing that I bought, let me, let me pull it up. The very last thing I bought was a Janome Horizon Memory Craft 9480 QCP. I bought the floor model and um, they're going to send it to a local store for me to pick up. So if it was just all of this, I probably wouldn't need the second job, but I'm going to need the second job pay for this. And um, I don't care. I will get a second job and work nights and weekends to pay for this machine. Um, it has a stitch regulator on it. It's the it's Janome's first stitch regulator that they've made that I know of. And it's only compatible with two machines. This one and then one of their big boys. It was the M7 or the M8 or the M17. One of those. That's it. And I got to try it out. I got to play with the stitch regulator and I liked it. And I think that I would be a bit more willing to free motion my quilts now and get some of them done instead of paying somebody else to do them because that's where I'm at. Um, so yeah, um, this is a long one. Um, I don't think I have anything else. I, oh, they did give me a free badge. <laughs> it's not even iron on. You have to sew it on. They gave me a sew on diamond patch. from What? What is this? I, I don't get it. I don't get what this has to do with Janome. Somebody tell me. What does it have to do with Janome? Um, I think that's pretty much it. There might be a, a random knickknack here or there. I got a free calendar from one of the exhibits that I attended. Um, and there might be a random sticker or something. Um, I have this scratch off here. I need to scratch off to see if I won something from the Serendipity Fabrics website. Let's see what we got here. Scratch five. So I got five percent off of my order. Um, that wouldn't have been anything that I would have screamed about. Five percent. That's not even tax. So. At least I don't have to feel any type of way like, oh, God, it was 50%. I could have got something else. No, nope, 5%. But that's my haul, guys. That's my Qualcomm haul. Um, and hopefully I won't be going to another one for three or four years because um, this was expensive. But I think I would do the cash thing next time. I'll delete every card out of my digital wallet and just bring cash. And then I don't have to worry about this. So that is it for me, and I'll see you guys next video.